Gary Fox here, and uh, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to do a little slideshow, but do a lot of talking along with it. The popsicle crane is almost done. Almost. Keywords. So I will be able to test it probably next week. Now, on this picture of it here, let me point out one thing. The boom is pointing backwards right now. It actually will be pointing uh, in the opposite direction and there will have to be a counterweight here or I'll have to clamp this board probably I'll clamp it when we do the initial test uh, and the original the final crane would have a beam sticking up here somewhere that runs off that pulls the rope that holds the actual boom uh, controls the angle of the boom if you look at real cranes, you'll see see what I'm talking about. Okay, as we did the analysis of this crane uh, way back there, and a lot of you with the videos that just watched the videos have missed all of that. Uh, as I did it, I found out that the crane basically is under compression. The boom is. Uh, and let's go to another picture here that will show that better picture of a real crane so we go to this picture here this is a real picture of a real crane this crane's being used as a drag line and uh, so that's why the line is actually not going straight down like they normally do because they're actually dragging a bucket down here to pull mud out of the bottom of a pit but crane shows pretty much all of the uh, pieces and if you look okay this beam this cable right here is the one that's doing the main pulling but the real cables that are doing all the real work are these dudes right here that are actually holding the beam up holding the boom up if the boom is pushing down let's say by 10 pounds approximately this has to push up by 10 pounds and that means that these cables, because they're such a bad angle in comparison to the boom, are actually going to be pulling about 50 pounds. So there's about a 5 to 1 multiplier there, uh, not in our favor. So what it comes down to is that all of the up-down weight, the weight perpendicular to this boom, is being canceled out right here where these uh, cables tie into it. But all of the uh, all of the uh, other forces are going straight along inside the, uh, the the boom and putting the boom under compression, and that's what I worried about the most. That's why there was a previous video that talked about columns under compression and the way that they tend to want to uh, bow buckle. So we have all this cross member bracing in our crane just like it is in this, these big cranes to prevent the uh, cross, the buckling of the main booms. And that's why these booms uh, can be made almost as long as you want to make them. Uh, there is one problem, and we'll discuss that in just a minute. So we'll go back to my crane. As I said, that boom will be going out in the opposite direction. If you look at it, it's basically a teeter-totter right here, a seesaw. And uh, you've got a really long lever arm out here, so a little bit of weight on that boom is going to have to have a lot of counterweight on the back here. If you've ever noticed real cranes going to the job site, and there's truckloads after truckloads carrying part of that crane because it gets assembled on the job site, one of the trucks is carrying nothing but counterweights get put on the back of the crane. Recently looked at a crane that was a professional, a real one. It's made by a French company. And they actually have a little truck that rides behind here that actually has even more counterweights in there. So they're able to have massive booms. I think three or four hundred feet out there. Uh, so that's the biggest problem is the counterweight. Okay, what do I want to do with this crane after I'm done with it? 
I'm not real sure. I may test it to destruction. Then again, I may uh, try to make this a little toy for my granddaughter. I don't know if she would care for this toy or not. Uh, probably giving it to her is probably more destruction than it would be the other way around. But uh, we'll see where I go with it. Anyhow, the goal right now is a 45 degree angle, 10 pounds of weight. That'll come out to approximately 50 pounds pull on the uh, on the ropes, and uh, a 50 some pounds pull compression inside this thing. Okay, the weakest part, the boom itself, which is like from here up to about right here, was not all that hard to think about. It's all symmetric. You pretty much uh, just keep gluing 45 degree angles and a few cross members in here. And uh, that pretty much created the, the tower part of the boom. The bottom part was a hassle because all of the weight's going to be concentrated right there onto an axle that's going to be going through it. And uh, I used a quarter inch dowel rod for that. Everything else is popsicle sticks, except for a couple of quarter inch dowel rods. I just couldn't figure out how to make that out of popsicle. I didn't want to make it out of popsicle sticks. Okay, the part that we're working on right now is what I'm calling the head. They call this the butt, and that's actually what crane companies call it. This I'm calling the head or the nose. And uh, that's the part I'm working on. And this is going to be the weakest part of this whole thing. Uh, the way I built it was that I started out with a design. And uh, the design was that basically built some popsicle sticks and uh, made some horizontal popsicle sticks, some, or some vertical, I guess. In comparison to those, I had these actually starting to do the widening that was needed to uh, match the uh, boom. And then I wanted to make it a little bit stronger, so I put another popsicle stick in parallel, but then I cut that down once we got away from the places that had all the weight on them. There's a third popsicle stick. It's stuck right in here, and you'll see that when I laid this out. Okay, that was my basic plan. Uh... And then this shows it as it ties on into the other. Okay, these were three layers, three popsicle sticks wide. That's the end of the boom, typical boom. And then this part right in here is uh, this part that's becoming the head. This would be two. This is three popsicle sticks wide, two. And then this ended up being two because I didn't want to make it any wider. Okay, these had to be two because they're going to have to bend, and you'll see that in just a minute. This whole thing comes to, toward a point, and that's why it's going to be the weakest part of this whole, of this whole uh, mechanism. Okay, the way I built it was that I, uh, I got another picture here that really should go first. I took my plan, printed it out one by one, or a scale of one to one, put that on a board, and then I put a piece of wax paper over top of it, laid the popsicle sticks on top of that, actually put a little drop of glue, because it comes off of the uh, off of the wax paper fairly easy, and that way it kept them from moving around while I was placing the other stuff in there. Then I placed the sticks on top of it, glued those in place, clamped the whole assembly and allowed it to dry. Then I continued on building it up to enough layers to uh, consider it done. And you'll see another picture of it here. Um, this is after I cut off the first layer and put it on the second layer. You can see, by the way, these popsicle sticks are not all that good. Uh, I bought a package of 1,000 of them at a really reasonable price at Walmart. Well, I kind of got ripped because uh, probably only one-third of those are uh, 
any good. Most of them are pretty bad. I was able to use this one there because it's going to get cut off about right in here. And uh, so I could use that bent ugly one for that because the part that I needed was good. Decided to put a piece in the middle because there will be that quarter inch dowel rod there that's going to be pulling primarily back. I needed something for it to press against. So uh, I actually trimmed this popsicle stick to fit, fit the area. Okay, <clears throat> once I got it all put together, um, this shows you what the head looks like once it's stuck on top of the uh, popsicle stick. I was still putting the uh, glue in there so it was uh, being clamped. I don't think I actually had this in glued at that particular time. Just kind of had it clamped in place with the, using these binder clips. But that's what the... Uh, the head's looking like now. That's the stick that will be used to, uh, for the ropes that are going to control the uh, lift of the whole boom. And then this right in here is the pulley. It's the axle for the pulleys that are in there. I've got two pulleys. Uh, I won't do it when I'm at test, but eventually if I decide to make this a toy, and let's see, this will show you the pulleys. If I decide to make this a toy, uh, those pulleys, well, the uh, string will go down, back up, and then back down, and then tie off up here. And um, that will give me a 4 to 1 ratio, so it will be a lot easier for a kid to crank uh, to pull the weight up if they're pulling up a heavy weight. And uh, it will be a lot more mechanical advantage on lifting it and besides that it was a more of a challenge see if I can make two pulleys in there that would slip against each other okay what I talked about how come it will be weak as I was building this I assembled all of that and then I started putting in the uh, braces on the side and that's why you see all these clips here this picture was taken after the uh, previous picture where you saw other clips. So I was putting all of this bracing along the length. The bracing I have yet to do, and it's going to be the bracing that's going to be the most critical, is going to be on the top and the bottom and you can see that how these sticks are bowed. That was so it would get the angle so that it would come in. Uh, there was no other way and that's why it couldn't be glued until it was already pretty much in place uh, because one of these is going to be sticking further back into the uh, into the boom sticks than the other one. You can see the inner one sticking in a little further than the one on the outer edge. Same on this side because it has to bow. There's no other way around it. So I got to cross brace this a bunch to prevent that bow from a uh, causing this thing to spraddle out and that will be the point where it breaks. If I take it all the way to destruction that will be the point. Real cranes, you straight members, they uh, gusset the material there. It's all welded. It's tubular steel. Uh, they don't have the problems that we have doing it with the popsicle sticks. So they're able to predict things a little bit better than we are with popsicle sticks but hey that's the fun that's that's the uh, that's the finesse that we have to do uh, this shows it at the other end of it the bowing and uh, this shows how I had to bow in the opposite direction here to come back straight for the uh, the pulley end so you can see uh, that one there also is going to be weak. These are going to want to tend to go straight back, squeeze those things closer together, and eventually break it. So those are my two weak points on this whole crane. Anyhow, that's uh, that's what it is. Probably next week I'll be having the uh, one where I test it. I'm going to test it with 10 pounds. Uh, hopefully it'll be able to handle it. It'll be a boring test. No, nothing breaking. But uh, who knows? It may. So, 
uh, come back and see the uh, the test. We'll see what happens. And uh, I'm not going to edit it. Uh, not unless I have a whole bunch of Murphy living with me again like I did last time. Uh, pretty much you're going to get to see the test. See what happens. See if I fail or see if I did good. Appreciate you listening. This is Gary Fox of Create and Make. Thank you.